Hello and welcome back to another Millennial Minute. I'm David Grasso. Today's hot topic, should your social media presence impact your job? You've already heard from our guests, a friend of bold and democratic strategist, Max Burns, and joining him is St. Martin's press author, Lexi Hudson. Great to hear from you both. So Lexi, to start off with you, you say cancel culture is affecting corporations and the ability to speak out. Really fascinating take, give us more. Virtually all employees in America are at will employees, meaning that the company companies have the right and the freedom to fire anyone they want for any reason. Uh, and also we know that the First Amendment doesn't apply to private companies, only the government. But just because companies should uh, or have the ability to, to fire whoever they want. And just because the First Amendment doesn't, uh, doesn't apply to private companies, that doesn't mean they should uh, monitor and police the opinions of, of, the, of, of their employees as they um, arbitrarily. There are serious consequences to this, as I, as I mentioned earlier, the chilling effect, the, the effect on morale of companies across the country. Um, and, and there are some serious, uh, there are some really important uh, safeguards that our criminal justice system has, um, such as um, transparency and the rule of law that doesn't exist with informal, powerful, informal institutions like our social norms. That's important to keep in mind. Yeah. So Max, you had a different take, right? Social media was just kind of a megaphone and, you know, people need to be careful with what they're saying because, you know, it, everyone gets to hear it when they put it on social media. Yeah. It's easy to forget sometimes that social media is our real life. And through anonymity or pseudonyms, we sort of mentally separate ourselves from the more extreme positions that we take on the internet. Uh, but I agree with Lexi, corporations are incredibly powerful in their ability to hire and fire. There are very few worker protections there. If we want to address that at the base, the answer is to support and strengthen unions that will actually be able to put in for some sort of counterweight against large scale corporate uh, power. But in the meantime, what we have is at least a progress from where uh, this is used to be something that was very ad hoc and HR would decide what was appropriate as they saw it. We're at least now starting to write down guidelines so employees can contest whether their behavior was inappropriate or not. But I, I quite honestly don't think that that's a strong enough protection. Yeah, so Lexi, where do we draw the line, right? Like what, can we go out and spout stuff that's totally inappropriate and be protected? Or what, what are the guardrails with this? And one of the problems I think Lexi and Max, you'll both agree is that the goalpost keeps on moving, right? So that's what exactly is appropriate right. yesterday necessarily isn't appropriate tomorrow. Isn't that Absolutely. right, Lexi? Absolutely, great, great, right, great point, David. And I, and I love what Max said that, that companies, that, that the right thing to do is for companies to write down a code of conduct and, and have that be freely available to all employees and not, um, and it, that prevents the arbitrary and capricious uh, enforcement of, of, a, of, a, of a HR decision being made based on a Twitter mob. And we don't want that. <laughs> um, because again, going back to this comparison between our formal institutions and our informal institutions, again, we have things like, again, the rule of law that, that says, all people, wealthy, poor, um, powerful, and less powerful, they are all equal to the same rules and they are, they are subject and they, and they have the ability to know what the rules are. But in the realm of, in the form of public opinion and in, in, in this cancel culture, we don't see that. We often see the mo more powerful people in society not being fired, not being canceled. Um, take uh, Steven Pinker, there was a huge campaign to try and get him disbarred from a scholarly association in America uh, after he signed the the Harper's letter, you know, decrying, uh, decrying cancel culture and trying to promote free speech. But of course, he's an incredibly influential and pow powerful person. So he wasn't fired. He wasn't disbarred from this <laughs> scholarly society. But we're seeing more and more instances of very low level employees across the Amer America being fired or punished by their employers for things taken out of context, like someone records something or takes a photo, and then they're they're fired without without cause. And that that's a, a problem that I think can be remedied uh, by corporations stating in print and having freely available to all, all employees at one code of conduct that applies to everyone. Yeah. So why should company, it seems like really powerful people get away with murder and people who are lower on the rungs of power just seem to have no recourse and get canned, right? Why does that exist? You were saying cancel culture really only matters if you have the resources to fight it. Exactly. And the truth is that at the top level, even people who get canceled don't really get canceled. Louis C.K. still doing club shows. Steven Pinker has a new book 
it's out, he's doing a tour for it. Uh, this falls on people who don't have the resources to fight back. And that's one of the reasons why we need to make a much more collaborative, much more listening based uh, discussion on how we police this because companies in this really polarized time are very sensitive about alienating Democrats or Republicans. And when something can go viral in a snap, uh, companies are finger on the trigger automatically as soon as they hear the first bit of kickback. Uh, there's a little work to be done on that side and there's also work to be done on getting uh, more comfortable representing the brands that you represent as an employee and understanding that you can't say whatever you want uh, and, and just hope that the company won't notice. So I have one more question for you both and then we're gonna wrap this up. And I have to be fully transparent here, right? I check potential employees social media before I hire them, right? And I'm hoping my staff sees this <laughs> so that they understand that this is totally normal. Most people do this. Do you guys think that's kosher or that's terrible? Lexi, we'll start with you. Absolutely, there's nothing wrong with that. It's the, the public persona that you're putting out to the world. Like there's no secret that, <laughs> that once you tweet something, you have no control over who sees it. So there's nothing, nothing, nothing wrong with that at all. Max, what do you think? I think it's totally okay. It's just an extension of the background check uh, that we've had for decades. What they need to do more than anything is to be upfront and say they do that. It takes a lot of anxiety off people and actually makes them reconsider a bit what they've left up on their Twitter. Yeah, and to be completely frank here, I know, funny enough, a lot of people are holding drinks in social media because you tend to be celebrating. I don't think that's a bad thing. Some employers tend to think that's a bad thing. So I just want to make sure that everyone out there knows that I have a modern <laughs> twist on this, but I also don't want someone who's abusing their platform. And let's face it, even everyone is a micro-influencer, aren't they, mm -hmm. guys? Unfortunately. Yeah. Right. Unfortunately. <laughs> so let's, let's hope that people use social media for good and that companies are a bit more sensitive to their employees' needs. And on that note, Lexi and Max, always a pleasure talking to you. Thanks for having us. Thank you. And thank you all for watching. Be sure to follow us at Bold TV on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Parler, Instagram, or wherever else you consume social media. On that note, have a great day and we'll see you soon.